I think you can outwork anybody. I think that's the it factor. That um, I'm not saying, you know, don't work smart because it's not always like you got to pick and choose, but um, you, know, you can't get anywhere without working hard. And it's just like bottom line, you just need that for anything. Yeah, I gotta keep it trilly on my soul. I'm the most selfish person that I know. Here we go down the rabbit hole. Got a couple carrots from my neck. Self respect when you out of line, you put yourself in check. Oh. Welcome to the Keller and Kess Show. I'm Megan Keller, and I'm Amanda Kessel. Welcome back to the Keller and Kess Show. We had a little brief hiatus there for World Championships, but we hope you enjoyed our last guest, Abby Rock, who lit it up at the World Championships. Hilarious episode, maybe one of our best. Let us know which ones have been your favorite so far. But this week, we have the absolute legend coming on, the GOAT, the goat. of women's hockey, Miss Hillary Knight. <laughs> Such a legend, Ooh. but like, also the f- the funniest person that you can't even can't even explain her without. She's an onion. onion. No. I feel like we say that all the time. Like, there's just so many layers to her, mm-hmm. and you learn something new every time. And it's she's one of the most interesting people, <laughs> <laughs> interesting teammates. I know my favorite thing is that like on ice stuff happened to her oh my gosh yeah we have to so we talk about it actually in the episode like the two things that happened to her recently goalie stick in denmark and then the goal after for regulation time yeah in seattle and she gets mauled and then there's a new one that we have to add in we can actually share that one um we it, was, it was versus Canada, right? In the yeah. prelim rounds? Prelims. We're out for a power play. <laughs> and the puck gets sent down, and our goalie's playing it, Aaron Frankel. And you guys were getting a change. Yeah. And Aaron sent it, had to send it up to the boards. Like, she, there was so much pressure on her and ended up sending it towards the bench. And Hillary could not get off the ice fast enough, and she ended up in, like, the media booth, like, with the camera woman, like, hanging on blankets yeah <laughs> she jumped up on all fours and is hiding there and i had no idea because carp's crush checking me in the, in, in the back in the back get off the ice get off the ice yeah i had no- so funny and she like lingered on the boards she was like like birdie on the perch mm-hmm. was just hanging on the boards with this camera lady our equipment manager is kind of like looking at her like what the hell is she doing like she's in the media booth and the ref, it's like she's, like, hiding. The ref is like, I see you. Get down. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, nobody even knew until after the game. Yeah. It happens every oh time. God. All three things <laughs> I didn't know occurred until after the game and maybe even the next day. On the bus, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember we were in our hotel room and I had gotten a Snapchat from Haley Skarupa. She catches everything. That's who catches she- it, Yep. Yeah, the first one in Denmark, the goalie stick, she sent a Snapchat to Hill. And then this one, I open up the Snapchat and I see Hillary just like in between the glass, hanging on the boards. And I called you over quick to watch it, but it had expired already. So we had to like wait to the next morning. And it was so funny. We got to left- throw that up on the Instagram. Yeah, we'll put all three up. It's and so funny. <laughs> we talk about this all the time, too. We're like, which one's your favorite? I think mine's the goalie stick. Same. I've never laughed that so hard in my life, I don't think. When when she whips it around her back my and like abs were hurting. It was so funny. It was so funny. And that one went viral. Like Bar Down was posting it and too good. Yeah. But it is hilarious like you said that she has all of these big time goals and like is one of the best players. Uh, to ever play women's ice hockey and she has these hilarious things that happened to her on the ice Mm -hmm. like wouldn't happen to anybody else but no but i wonder what's next there's more to come yeah we said i said every year something happens but then i realized they've all been this season so something soon i remember us asking we're like did this stuff happen to you like in college or like this seems like a new thing yeah i don't know She's getting, yeah, I don't know, it's new. 
We'll have to see which one is She's everybody's evolving. favorite. Yeah. But besides that, unbelievable hockey player. We just finished up World Championships. Finally came home with a gold medal again. Yes. Feels feels good. It had been a while, so. It had been a while. We were we were due there, but Hillary had a hat trick in the gold medal game. So I don't know if that's ever happened in women's hockey, men's hockey on the international level. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be hard to believe if it did, mm -hmm. to be honest. I mean, maybe it has, but it was kind of crazy. It was an insane game, like back and forth. I feel like we'd score and then Canada would score. And it was just, I think it was an exciting game mm -hmm. to be a part of. And obviously whenever it's in North America, like the rink has been packed and they had, it was a sea of red. It was so. We had our little section there. We did. Trying to chant. We did. But yeah, finally no overtime. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's a 3-2 game. Yep. Oh yeah, there was a lot of goals for us. Yeah, that was a high scoring game. Yeah. The the last like high scoring in 2015 my first worlds. It was 7 to 5. I remember watching that one. That was a crazy that game. That is wild. So that was up there. And um, my first Wait, did I <laughs> did I tell you or did my parents tell you when they were walking into the rink? And some Canadian fan was just giving it to them. Oh yeah, Lynn, oh your, your mom was she was rattled that she that she lost her cool. Oh my gosh, yeah, they were wearing um, colored jerseys mm -hmm. or stuff, and they were just like, "How's that silver color? How is it, huh?" Like, <laughs> and they're like, "Don't say anything, don't say anything." But I think my mom may have lost her cool. On the way out, she but, said she saw him. Yes, and then she on started, the way out. They didn't say disturbing. anything. On, on the way in, they did not say a word. They're like, all right, don't say anything. Like, we're just going to walk in and enjoy the game. And then when they were leaving, when the game finished, I think my brother saw the guy and was like, that's him, and mm -hmm. just starts giving it back to him. And he was like, how's that, Silver, huh? But it's just, yeah. like, hilarious, like, the fan interactions. Like, everybody's cheering for their country and it's like a fun atmosphere like i think that's hilarious and you even see it in like playoffs now like playoff hockey yeah like i was just watching the leafs game and then seeing like all the tampa fans like sitting in their seats like contemplating life after like mm -hmm. everybody gets so into it brutal are not, they not gonna lie like yeah one uh playoff series when uh, phil was on the penguins I went down to Tampa, and my dad, like, doesn't really, like, talk during games, doesn't talk to anybody, and some guy just started, like, turning around and, like, spitting <laughs> in my dad's face. No. Yeah. Like, oh, screaming that's, like, in his face, and, like, my gross. dad hadn't, like, he doesn't even, like, cheer, like, yeah. if you score, like, nothing. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was nuts, like, so they're, like. That is nuts. I can't even imagine them. I was, like, there's definitely fights going on in the stands right now. So. Oh, yeah. Wait, I actually saw a video of, like, uh, Leafs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were going at mm -hmm. him. They were going at him. In the, in the box. I thought that was And he was giving it back to them, but, like. I thought it was like, awesome like, that he was. Like, yeah. Yeah, going back at he, him. He called the guy a hero. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was funny. That's so funny. It was really funny. That game was off. Oh, people get into it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I was like, of course. That the, that guy would find my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> my poor mom. That's why you can't wear the jersey, you know? You gotta fly under the radar. Oh, what's she doing? Yeah. She's probably wearing that in school. Mm -hmm. When she got home, she probably took her medal in to school, and you don't even know. Yeah, middle school teacher. Yeah. The kids love her, though. I think she gritties for them. Does yeah, she know what her. our, like, what what our new song is? is? I asked her. She didn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... I don't know if that's... Our song probably has, like, bad language in it. Mm -hmm. so she's probably not allowed to play that. But I'm sure her children know it mm -hmm, they definitely do i'll teach her that one she can yeah. do that's the next dance she can do yeah yeah throw it in there yeah 
Other All right. That, Do you have anything else? I I don't think so. I'm back to the office. Just um, watching playoff, playoff yep. hockey. I'm watching playoffs every night. So. Rooting for Phil now. Is that your yep. team? Yeah. Unfortunately, See him win another. Team's out. So rooting for Vegas now. I'm rooting for the bees. Yeah, your bees. They're yep. In they're Boston. Good. They are yeah, good. I would actually love to see them, them and the Leafs for that a matchup. Be, that would be crazy. Next round, yeah. Yeah. It's like So we'll see if the Leafs can get past this infamous first round. I know. I, I like, feel like there's no way they're losing this, but somehow. Yeah. After they came back tonight, like. <sighs> they, they, always, they always find a way. I think I texted you, and did you turn the game off? I had turned it off, yeah. When it was 4 1, because I texted I you, I was like, the other game. You're making it a game. And you're like, no way. I turned it off. Yep. And then they had tied it up, and. That's nuts. So we'll see. You're never out. They're never out. You're never out. Just like us at Worlds, we tied it up yeah. with two you goals. tied it up. And <laughs> how long? A buzzer beater, yeah. That was wild. That was wild. I didn't real. I had no idea. I didn't realize there was like two seconds. Left <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, you were like yeah. you scored with like I blacked minute, out. Forty seconds left. Yeah. <laughs> like there was three seconds left. Meg. Yeah. Show. Yeah. yeah. Shows how nervous I was. You know. I know. I had faith. Faith in my road roomie. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you didn't even hear the booze. Garbage goals now. Blocking out the haters out there. Yep. I hear nothing. The mentals are strong. As they should be. Yep. Well, I uh, I hope everybody enjoys this next episode with the legend, Miss Hillary Knight. She is one of a kind, and we'll have to make sure to put all of her career highlights, not only her goals, but also her... Bloopers. Funny plays. <laughs> yeah, bloopers. <laughs> Grabbing the goalie stick, scoring hat tricks after regulation, and heading in between the glass for her day job. So you'll have to let us know which one is your favorite. Um, but yeah, enjoy this episode and make sure you follow us on Instagram, like, and subscribe wherever you're listening, Torch Pro's YouTube channel, and enjoy. Welcome back to the Keller and Kess show. Today, we have somebody that was on our dream guest list. We're lucky to have, she hardly needs an introduction, but Lucky to have Hillary Knight with us today, the greatest goal scorer in women's hockey ever, um, has basically won everything possible, broken every record, so we're just really lucky to have her on the show today. She was just on the ice for a girls' clinic with the, the CAPS youth program, so we had to kind of hijack her from there, but we're happy that she's able to join us. Welcome to the Keller and Kess Show, Hill. Thanks for having me, guys. You're in the hot seat. I'm scared. Yeah, you should <laughs> I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> Is this the most nervous you've been? You do a lot of these. Top, top three, I think. Yeah. Yeah, well, we ask the hard-hitting questions around here. Yeah. We're, we're nervous to have you here. I mean, it's not often that you get a one-on-one -on -one with Miss Hillary Knight. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, bus mates, so... <laughs> That's true, that back of the bus. like Getting dizzy. Yep. I mean, I'd be sleeping the whole time, so I don't know what you guys are doing back there. Yeah, obviously, though, like, I mean, everybody in women's hockey and probably outside of women's hockey, like, they just know your name. Like, you've what you've done on the ice is obviously shown for itself. Four-time Olympian, um, continually show up over the course of, what is it now, like 15, like uh, how, too many how, years. how long have you been on the team? Too many, many years. years. <laughs> like know, since like 06? Somebody stay oh like 06. Yeah. Like stay that good. I was 10. For yeah. that long. <laughs> <laughs> like Sorry. four. Yeah. I mean, you're such a legend. No. And we were talking about this earlier, actually, like how crazy is it for you now to, we've seen pictures of you with your medals with some of our now teammates. It's wild, isn't When they it? were young, and now you're teammates with them on yeah. the national team. It's crazy because, um, you know, when someone, 
sort of joins new they're really like nervous and stuff and then when they finally get over that hump they like kind of like come up and they're like we took a picture together and I'm it, like, oh my goodness it like, literally seriously? takes them like yeah. the whole week mm-hmm. it's like the end of camp or the end of the tournament they're sitting next to you in a stall yeah. like and you're like their background probably <laughs> like you and them together no so it's so funny so like my first team um Chrissy Wendell was like the icon of hockey right like the pinnacle person and um you know, I brought my high school binder and <laughs> you know, the big binders, you know, like the two inches. Yeah. And so I had a print off of her on the front of my Stop. binder. No. And you had so to hide it? Yeah. We were in one of these shuttles and I go to like do some homework because it's like a 40 minute drive and I pull it out of my backpack and immediately like I, I put two and two together that I'm like sitting next to Chrissy Wendell and she's on the front of my binder. So I close it quickly <laughs> and put it right back in my bag. I was, like, You're like no happened. homework on this trip. Yeah. Yeah. That's but hilarious. Did you ever show it to her? No. Gosh, no. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> so is this the first time she'll hear of it? Probably, if she listens? Yeah. yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's so crazy because it's just like visibility, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's just so important because you understand you're just like a small piece in everything. And you can never get too high. You can never get too low. But every time you hop on the ice, you know you're representing someone, someone else, not just yourself. So um, between that, loving that the game and you guys I mean no I'm like like seriously like (laughs) if you don't have a good room you're not coming back that many years that's true and so I think it's just what's so special it's just like that that inspiration in the room you feed off of someone else you could be having a bad day you're like she's got it like I'm gonna go help her or I'm gonna you know chip in whatever it is so I don't know hockey's just like it's so special and I think that's why like I don't want to speak for you guys but we all love it it's like problem solving on the fly and like figuring out how to do it together which is pretty sick And you spoke about visibility in there a little bit, and your on ice shows for itself, but you were also kind of like ahead of the curve, like in social media and creating a brand. Can you speak about that a little bit, and and how did that kind of come to you? Yeah, I feel like like when you came out of college, like social media was just becoming a big thing, and you really Mm -hmm. like hit the nail on the head. Like, I feel like you took off right after that. Was that always like, a plan for you or no, did you just see like, the opportunity and I'd say so um there's obviously Facebook so I got on that in high school <laughs> MySpace yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah um but Angela pulled me aside she's like hey you gotta get on Twitter and I was like you know there's Facebook that's so funny to hear you're right yeah, yeah you gotta get on, on Twitter, Twitter. Like, no one's <laughs> that, that Twitter now. thing <laughs> out there and I was like be real says that. yeah Twitter <laughs> yeah yeah, so she's just like, you have to do this. You have to, you know, kind of self-promote. And I was just like, yeah. She's like, nobody wants to know this. Like, what I'm eating for breakfast or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden, everyone's getting on, you know, the different platforms. And it's fun. And it starts fun at first. And then it, it kind of slowly becomes work. But I got hooked when it was fun. And, you know, I think that's just the crux of the moment when women's sports were becoming more popular and people want to know more behind the scenes of our lives. And a lot of, you know, the male sort of heavy sports and the established pro leagues, you don't necessarily get that sneak peek. What's what's on the other side of things? You get sort of that um, curated look into the locker room or the guys training. But here I am taking selfies and, and videos, and <laughs> now you get to see all of it. Sometimes it's not great, yeah. <laughs> but you know, getting dressed on milk cartons in the bathroom before a pro game, like you don't want to see that. But it's it's important for visibility. So yeah, it's it's important that you say that and. You know, you kind of mentioned how you kind of fell into it, but no doubt you'd you'd be the face of women's hockey regardless of social media. You have the records and the accomplishments to prove it. And whether this was a goal or not, um, you kind of are the leader of our sport in some way we look to. Like, what? It's like, so what does crazy. that mean to you? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's weird. Like, I just, like, wake up and I just go about my day, right? But then when you, like kind of take that personal hat off you're like oh like you know you are responsible for more things and whether we like it or not we have to take on more roles right now um so to have the the following that I do the visibility brand support um aligned with also like competition it's sort of that perfect mixture of being able to lend a voice to people who don't have one and also do it through like the sport that I love like we can't forget we all fell in love with the game like years ago and that sort of comes first and you can inspire other people through it. Yeah, well, we couldn't ask for a better ambassador Thanks, and guys. leader <laughs> of and our game. 
And kind of seeing you um, from the beginning of that time, like being your teammate for so long, like the side bangs. <laughs> oh, they're yeah. terrible. <laughs> side bangs. You know what? I will say that was sort of like a, a Wisconsin thing. I feel like we was all it? had them. Yeah. Like, there's something in college that yeah. like. It, no, it was, it was huge. everywhere. Even my mom was so mad. Yeah. Even <laughs> so in uh, school, I remember kids having the side bangs. I just yeah. had straight across bowl cut, but oh, well, that's bold. Timeless. Yeah, yeah. Everybody had that haircut too. I know you yeah, had I it. <laughs> I was thinking of bringing it back. But hey, just watch. We can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watching you evolve and kind of like seeing how you started on social media and into now, like, you know, I I think that now I just admire how much you are yourself, like. You know, it's hard when everybody's watching you and sometimes it's like, you know, you want to look perfect on social media. But I think, you know, what I admire is that you show those like non-perfect moments and non-perfect, non-perfect sides of yourself. And it's mm -hmm. you've really, you know, become authentic in, in showing that over time. And I've really noticed that in something I admire. And, you know, within this past year, you recently came out. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's huge just with like somebody that's in your position and it's still you know people always wonder like why do people need to come out now like what's going on with that well it still is like you know something that's judged in in society and i think it's really you know brave but it's, it's mm -hmm. also huge that that you took that step no thank you i it just came to this moment where it just felt like I was sort of suffocating in my own body. I'm like, I, I just feel like I was living sort of this dual life, which was kind of weird um, to me because in, in many respects, I am authentic on social, right? I'm not like putting together this perfect image because I know that's not attainable and I don't want this like unhealthy, yeah. unattainable standard to be set. So I don't know. I just, I was so scared for so many years um, because I think, you know, you, you feel the weight of a sport. You feel what you should be because you've been told what people should be like your entire life. And un not unsimilar to sort of the body image stuff uh, when I went through that. And so I just sort of drew parallels and finally became comfortable enough with who I was as an individual to come out and say that I'm a member of the queer community. And that's just it's awesome for me. And I was able to take a deep breath. But... I was so nervous for so many years, but I realized to be able to come out is important because there are so many people struggling mm -hmm. with who they are. And to, whether it's lend a voice or, or um, maybe just even draw a little bit more attention. Um, you know, I think the, the queer community is sort of underrepresented publicly in different professional sporting spaces and other industries as well. So it's just, it was super important to me and resonated specifically with me, but uh, you know, hopefully it's one of those things that people can look at and feel more comfortable um, when they see more people out. There was a lot of, I think, guys' hearts that were that were <laughs> broken, <laughs> probably. Yeah. That yeah. Day, like, yeah. God, I've been waiting ten years. <laughs> like, shoot my shot with yeah. Him. Well, I'm like, I'm tied down. So. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, that is rare for you. I know. It, it, tr it is. It took a while, but you know, you meet your person, you just know. So. The hottest commodity is off the block. They're off the they're, market. They're, folks. They're, they're they're have it. Yeah. It's like. She's yeah. off, but what other steps do you think need to be taken to, to make it more of, you know, something that yeah. doesn't need to be this big? I think deal. we just need to hold more space for each other. I think uh, create more spaces of inclusivity. Um, you never want to have anyone feel like a minority in any way, in any category. Um, and so I think it's just making sure that we, we do hold that space and are intentional with the way that we go about everything we do on a daily basis to be honest because there's so many different like microaggressions that go against you know people that you don't necessarily know um you know you're impacting i guess mm -hmm. is the best way to put it without getting too far into it yeah that's awesome once yeah. again i think you're an amazing advocate on all ends yeah uh, it's, you definitely i'm sure have helped a lot of people whether it be through sports or in life so that's amazing and we talked about a lot of your records, and you've been to four <laughs> Olympics now. Kess and I were actually just talking about this. That one, first of all, that's a crazy accomplishment. Yeah. But what has like changed over those four Olympics? What have you learned? What are some lasting memories? 
Yeah. I mean, that's how many years? 16 roomies. years. Yeah. 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 Who are the best roomies? Well, I've learned that if you have the best suite and the best roommates, <laughs> then the Olympics is awesome. Um, no, I mean, there's so many memories. And I think, obviously, like, the public sees, like, the win or loss, and you get the medal at the end. But there are, like, just so many fantastic memories that I have from, obviously, like, each one and different experiences. I think um, what the Olympics has taught me is you're never prepared for the Olympics. <laughs> you're, Isn't you, that true? You can't be. Yeah. Like, there's no... Each one's different, right? Each is different. It's got its own problems. Um, the different level and weight of media attention, accessibility. I mean, it's just... It's its, its own beast every single four year. So, it, yeah. But the memories there are just, I mean, that's why I keep signing up. That's why I'm mm -hmm. continuing to wrangle you guys and be like, so another I was four. Say, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, <laughs> but how are we feeling about number five and number four for you? How are we feeling girls? I need my roommates. <laughs> I mean, I got to make it too. Yeah. I mean, but I'm going to go for it. it. Yeah. yeah. I, that's another thing is I don't think people understand like our tryout process. Yeah. It, it is a grueling. lot of people continue to think like, Oh, you've been on the team. So you're just on the team. I like get that all the time and it's like no it's yeah. like every camp every month every year we continue to try out and are evaluated and there's always younger players coming up through the ranks who have a shot at making the team and we have to try and keep our position yeah mm -hmm. spoiler alert like been around you don't how just long get to go. and you never <laughs> feel like you're on the team you yeah. know and you're always like oh, I'm on the chopping block never this say could be the yeah. year yeah yeah so yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's what makes uh, it so special. It's just like, you know, it's the the best of the best that's representing our country. And you just want to be so badly in that room and be a part of it and win and just all the fun things. So I think as you're speaking, we're getting her on board <laughs> over here. Come on. Got it. <laughs> I'm on board if I can get there, guys. So we'll I know, I know. It's, yeah. And, and it's, it's there's insane. so many other factors. You have to, like, you know, you, you have to love it. You have to stay healthy. You have to, you know, yeah. be competitive mm -hmm. enough have to have an impact i mean it's just global pandemics global pandemic are a yeah. thing. like <laughs> got the minions hopping yeah. off <laughs> grabbing your nose swabs <laughs> literally right off the plane you know what's crazy is that was my gut check for beijing is when um you know we get off the plane and they're, they're in their suits hazmat suits yeah and it's like you're kind of like getting scary you're scared because you're like oh my gosh what's happening and then you know when we we're in that line and people would go around the corner and i heard a ah! oh <laughs> ah! and i was just like I don't know if I can do this for a month. Should I get out of line? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, yeah. they're playing home. Like, I don't know if I can do it. Because, like, it felt like it was that, like, sword down the throat oh circus my gosh. act. Yeah. yeah. That's what it they felt was like. They bad. were that going all the way down the throat. And then the yeah. first one we arrived was nasal. Mm -hmm. They touched my brain mm -hmm. yeah. easily. And then people don't even know about the pressure. Like, we didn't even know you guys were yeah, coming. Yeah, it's not even, like, the hockey part. It's, like, everything, like, surrounding it that, yeah. like, gets so hard. And, like, to be able to maintain that. Like, how do you maintain that this whole time? Like, it's crazy. Like, how do you do that? I don't know. Just, like, it can't be work. Just, yeah. It can never be work. Yeah. It just has to be fun. And then you know you're going to always outwork everyone else mm -hmm. if it's fun. Maybe you just convince yourself. It's kind of like when you're on the assault bike. No. <laughs> <laughs> somehow I can get myself to go faster on that bike because I think, like, I convince myself that the time will expire faster, which is <laughs> not you, a thing. If you pedal quicker. Yes. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't know if it's like this weird, like, self journey or guilt of like, you can just always go faster. You can always get more. You can always learn more. So I don't know. I guess that's kind of how. Mm -hmm. But no, I mean, the group, like, it's about the group, though. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's the shift is like when you're young and, you make that first one, it's sort of, it's like about you. Cause you're like, yeah, I made it. Like, this is my moment. And then if you're lucky enough to go back again, you're like, okay, like it's less about you. It's more about the team. And if you're mm -hmm. lucky enough again, it's just kind of like slowly like opens and opens more to being like, you understand how hard it is to win the further you get along the journey mm -hmm. and you know, you need everybody. Yeah. And it's just so special. And it's funny you said that because I think that's, um, what made our 2018 team so great is you guys as leaders when we had a young group that came in and we had won worlds after worlds after worlds but you guys made sure to let us know like it hasn't always been that way yeah and like you've had heartbreak in 2014 2010 and that was evident and I think as a team like we wanted to win so badly to experience a gold medal together mm -hmm. and you guys did a great job of like 
leading the way there for us. I, oh. It definitely had an impact on me and I, I think everybody else. Yeah, and you know what was crazy is just looking back in those years is we were so successful. So it's like, how do you imprint that like heartache, but you don't want you to experience it, right? Yeah. Because that's not helpful either because you're this mm -hmm. new young energy. So it's like, it's such a weird collaboration of different energies and everyone has to go at the same time and have you know their best game on the same day. Yeah. Team sports. You need, <laughs> need everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, and some things are just not in your control and you just no. go out there and do whatever. I mean, you know, our team is so good. Never did I think we were going to end up in a shootout in 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then there we were in a shootout. I didn't think I was going to be in the box. Right. Watching. There you go. <laughs> I tried well, to leave. They're like, no, you're back call. in there. That's that was like a BS situation. call. Terrible call. Yeah. It's all right. If it caused us to win in a shootout, I will gladly <laughs> sit in the box. Okay. Four years before that, though, I'm chasing down Haley Wickenheiser. And all of a sudden, you know, it's I'm in the box yep. watching the dream sort of slip through the fingers. Yeah. You know, like that two goal lead we had. It's just, it's such a finicky thing that it goes your way or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. you know? And it comes around every four years. It's crazy. Yeah. It's not like we play like 80 plus games a year, yeah. you know, and then get to go like seven, seven, seven. And yeah, how seven long? game series. Yeah. Like I want it to be best of three. Like I think that's perfect. <laughs> Because then you really get to see who the best team is. Yeah. And you don't really get, you know, on the bad side of the TV, the broadcasting and whatnot. You yeah. have iconic games. So. Shootout's tough. To tough. End in. Tough. Yeah. Maddie Rooney. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. And she was a youngin'. We didn't even yeah. practice shootouts all year. Yeah. That's Speaking the crazy part. Speaking of goalies, uh, that just jogged my memory. At this oh. past Worlds. Oh you, my gosh. <laughs> Hillary the may funniest have been, moment ever. been the first player ever to play a shift with the opposing team's goalie stick. Illegally. <laughs> Illegally. Yeah. What? What is what right? Was what? Go <laughs> I was like, going to never laugh. Like, like, so hard in my life. I was like, so embarrassed. We have like, to put I the still am in. embarrassed. You, you looked down and saw, like, you had the goalie stick in your hands and you were like, it was pure shock and panic. Um, yeah. I was I was peeking. <laughs> you and the you play, like went in yeah. collision, and then you somehow came out with the goal. You like whipped it from behind your back. Listen, like <laughs> I thought I was so cool that I caught my own stick behind my back, and then I took two strides. I was like, man, this is heavy. Yeah. And I go to put my other hand on it, and it's thicker. And I'm like, no, no, this can't be happening to me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, your it's face, like, a bad like dream. you literally had no clue that you were it playing with a so goalie funny. stick. Like, and then we, it that got was, shown in video the next day. Well, we had found it on. That was too good. I think Scrupa actually yeah, sent it to far us. Down. She, Who else? Far down. clipped yeah, it. It captured was like a huge it. watch. Oh, yeah. And we were dying in bed. Yeah. I've, had, I've had a bunch this year. Yep. We were going to bring up another yep. because <laughs> these videos just <laughs> seem to keep <laughs> happening to you. We were playing oh, in uh, Seattle for game three. Was it game three of the rivalry series? And we were up. What was the score? 5-2? Game or, five, yeah, four, five, two, yeah, five, two. Anyways, we had a face off in our zone. There was like 10 seconds on the clock, maybe. I thought it was a minute. <laughs> Hale <laughs> thought it was a minute. The puck gets sent down the ice, and most of the team just kind of stays down because we're like, all right, time's up, like game's over, we're up by two goals, and we all celebrate. And then people are talking to us after the game, like, why didn't anybody go help Hillary? And we're like, what? Like, what happened? Like, we saw this video again. The clock's at zero, and Hill is at the red line. And so, like, game's over. But the video plays out, and she is sprinting after this puck, after buzzer had already sounded. going, And she puts it in the net. Was that your Hattie? Yeah. <laughs> but then she comes back to, like, get in the pile with us to celebrate, and she just gets mobbed by the Canadian team because they thought she was, like – Dead serious. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, no, she had Purposely no idea. Going for the Hattie. <laughs> <She's> going for <laughs> Hattie. 15 <laughs> seconds after. Play through the whistle. Who, who noticed it? Like, I, because I had no idea until literally. Nobody it, did. I didn't notice until after. Maybe the game. And the crowd was going wild. Yeah. They loved it. 
and it was just like but as soon as i did it and i looked so back funny. like i knew like i felt it after i because i like took like i think like a half clapper like just like went in the net you did and then i was just like oh no here it comes and i just skated across their bench yeah so i was like all right like bend your knees like here we go <laughs> you're gonna that's, get hit you, like that's what you get right like yeah. there's that like unwritten code where like you don't do that and i was like okay like i i really screwed this now up I like understand. i get it but like Come at me, cause I'm gonna fucking drop you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, sorry for swearing. No, you totally <laughs> can't. But it was just so funny. But you couldn't hear anything hard there. Of hearing, like, they, yeah, yeah, I can't. Hear, like, <laughs> no. okay, this is what people don't know. I had no idea that you were even down there. No, and I was down there for yeah, <laughs> were, like I was, I was in it. Yeah, you I was were in the mosh pit. Hard. We were video. already <laughs> celebrating our crease and hills, <laughs> putting the pie in the empty net. <laughs> no, and like, here's oh. the thing, like. Like, when I played with uh, Danny or Hannah, like, they would tap me on the pants of when we were going because I can't hear. So, like, when coach calls us up, like, I can't hear. So, like, <laughs> yeah. all right, we're going. Like, she's tap, scoring tap. all these goals, and she's, like, she just can't she's hear. playing with disadvantage, and she's yeah. scoring all these goals here. That's why I didn't get the echolocation. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah that were. wasn't a 4K. No, but, yeah, that was uh, – yeah, yeah, I don't know what the next moment's gonna oh, yeah. be. That's We're in 2023 20, in now, that's so two hopefully. In a row, Hill. You got something in store. We're for waiting us. for it. Well, we can't like wait to see the the end of your career. I mean, it's already seems like how can you add anything, add anything more to it? You've had an unbelievable career, but just excited and and, and honored to be a part of it and. No, excited likewise. to see that. Uh, fifth, likewise, guys. The fifth one. Hopefully, we're all roomies at the. I yeah, know. The fifth Olympics. I know. I was. I mean, you know, I was trying to convince everyone to keep signing up. Yeah, <laughs> just sign up. All you sign gotta up do with is the sign girls. Up. Like, let's go. years of Olympics. Like, if is that it's what actually it is? crazy. Well, like, yeah. If you go to the Olympics, like, oh you've my god, twenty years of Olympics. Like, yeah. <laughs> that is so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They. I mean, yeah. It's just. The ride is just so, it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. We laugh about it for, like, every day after. I yeah. think we have our, like, roomy group chat going still, and there's at least one day a week somebody's sending something in there. Yeah. A picture, a video. Kess's mm -hmm. Polaroids. Oh, yeah. the Polaroids. I wish those were p for public release. Yeah. Like, those are just... Yeah. Good times, maybe someday when we're like yeah. 90. <laughs> 90. <laughs> well, we're like, I got this Hill's body. <laughs> Hill's still going to be at the Olympics. Yeah. No. Yeah. She's going to be 90 at the Olympics. I'll be wearing that skim yeah. dress. Yeah. yeah, the skim <laughs> dress. You better save that. <laughs> Wait, I found that oh, on the way out here. I was yeah. going to bring it just for fun. And then oh I was my like, God. God. I have room It my is bag. funny. So we got skims this past year for our listeners. And I mean, I don't know if you've seen our body types. Like, we're pretty strong girls. And Kim Kardashian skims are very tight form fitting and she gave us <laughs> this nice bodycon dress. We'll see through that. Yeah, we can't put the pictures out there, but yeah. It, it came it on for me. room in this and it was just What'd she say? She goes in the video. Not I don't for think me. this is yeah. for me. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> so but so yeah. funny. Oh. Man. I don't have anything else. I think I'm yeah. getting the gigglies now. Yeah, so. just what we finish it out with always is our, our top five. Starting five. Starting five. And we know you, literally our world traveler, have lived in a bunch of different cities. So we thought it would be fitting to do our starting five cities. Oh, my god! If you can choose. We can go all over the world or yeah, mine will probably be North America because I don't get oh. out much. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, well, I absolutely loved when I traveled to New Zealand. So I'd probably say Auckland oh, on there. Cool. Uh, so that's one. Uh, I got to give a shout out to Boston. Like cool. OG Boston. Um, Is super this special. in order? No. Okay. I was yeah. Gonna say, like, not in order. Know? Yeah. Sun Valley. Super special. Magical place. Like it's one of those places where you get off the plane and you just like feel different about really? yourself and everything. You're like. I like, need to get there. It. Once I've you get past been. the jet fuel, you know. The jet uh, fuel. Yeah. <laughs> Don't breathe in those toxins. Let's do a uh, ski trip. Yeah. Yeah. Come after. out, ski or golf. Yeah. Um, let's see. So, uh, Montreal is pretty sick. Montreal um, is cool. Gosh. And then, I don't know. California is tough because, like, no cow, so cow. Like, there's yeah, just, there's, it's, it's huge. different vibe, but, mm -hmm. like, it's just, it's awesome. Like, I was born outside of San Francisco, so I'd probably have to side with that. San Fran? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a good spot. I'm definitely going Boston. Nashville. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Nashville. Only a few days. Um, I'll go with Vegas. Really? Times there, yeah. Okay. So yep. Fun. After after the couple trips there, that's cracked my list. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. You go. I'm thinking. I got um, three. New York. Oh. oh. I mean, I'll add New York. New York I feel like City. New York's a given. Yeah. yeah. Boston. Yep. Um, Boca Grande, small little town in Florida. That's Vegas. <laughs> and then I'm going to go with, like, um, I can't even pronounce it, but in Greece on Santorini, oh. Ia or Oia. I'm not sure. I need to go there. Yep. Also, the way Copenhagen she says it, there. I need to go it's there. I liked Copenhagen. It's so fun. Yeah. Copenhagen, yeah. We get to go to some pretty cool places. Copenhagen is on your top. <laughs> oh, actually, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was appalled. <laughs> like, I was. I mean, that I was, think Copenhagen's cool. pretty cool. That was really cool. I was thinking of the little town that we were in. Hey, yeah, no. know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a pretty good pronunciation, I think. I don't know. That's how we were saying it. Like one of the happiest, I think, happiest yeah. cities. Okay. Great. Yeah. yeah. I can see Great that. way of life, all I think. Right. Yeah. So, I'm not, I'm, I'm not knocking it, all right? I don't know. <laughs> I mixed it up. Yeah. All right. I'll let you redeem yourself. <laughs> all right. So we've got one more thing. It is our Bauer question of okay. the day. It's our it factor. And basically, it's just that one thing that you think has allowed you to be so successful throughout your career, a character trait, anything you think that could be your it factor. Difference maker, yeah. Yeah, see, I thought yours was great. That's why I was posting it. (laughs) Thanks for the So, like, that's it. That's the it factor. Um, Gosh, the it factor. I don't – I think – I think you can – outwork anybody I think that's the it factor that um I'm not saying you know don't work smart because it's not always like you got to pick and choose but um you know you can't get anywhere without working hard and it's just like bottom line you just need that for anything that assault bike yep that assault bike love it if you pedal it. faster mm-hmm. time goes faster yeah I but mean it, yeah there's I mean there's so many things right like I said earlier like as long as it's like I say hard work but you have to like enjoy it too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I don't know if it's just making it fun. You're just the it factor. So yeah. No. You can't so have an answer. It like factor, when you're the it so factor. It's like, well, I was trying right. to go somewhere different than yeah. you went. So I'm like, that's it. That is the that it factor. It. No, when, when you guys, um, I can't remember who you're interviewing, but I remember listening and I was like, yes, that is it. Yeah. Like, well, that's why you've probably been to four Olympics going for five you've been doing it for as long as you have and broken all these records is because you continue to outwork everybody even though you have all the skill in the world at the same time so it's getting harder it's getting harder harder. we're we're pulling so skilled trailers out there we're moving mountains we're moving mountains we'll keep moving on (laughs) yeah every once in a while hill and i will find each other at practice i don't know if we found you but we'll be like i'm moving mountains today yeah like it's one of those days it's hard yeah. Legs aren't feeling it. Got a tractor <laughs> trailer behind me. You know exactly, too, how yep. you're feeling. You're like, hey, I'm moving mountains today. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. Yeah. Me, too. Well, uh-huh. thank you for coming no, on. Thanks for having me, and look at this. Yeah. yeah. I love you. Merch. Yeah. Merch, yep. yeah. Looks Sick. good on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Might wear it to the game tomorrow. Yeah. Pre-game outfit. Make yeah. sure you get a picture. <gasps> We're mm-hmm. playing, you guys. Oh, we are. You guys are on a win streak. Yeah, we are. A heater, one game. One. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes, though, to get rolling. I was recruiting the kids. I was like, hey, who are you cheering for tomorrow? They're like, oh, Harvey's. I'm like, oh, no, you're yeah. cheering for the Sonnet Slappers. <laughs> <laughs> Literally anybody but Harvey's. Yeah. yeah. They got too many fans. Yeah. But, but. thanks for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. If you're listening, like and subscribe. Watch us on Torch Pro's YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on Keller and Kess Show on Instagram. And that's about it. Yeah. That's it. Cheers. That's a wrap. Cheers.